Hello there, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy. The simplest of ways to use puff paint is straight onto a tag, and this is probably my favourite way of using, using it, because you get a, the really good wood grain effect that I mentioned before. So just put that on, it's sort of quite thin, try and get a variety of thin and thick. Okay, and that's one. And then also you can use it onto things like um, these little wooden embellishments. It's quite good onto these. If, like this is going to create quite a snowy effect on the leaf because I'm sort of spe speckling it on there. Okay, but of course don't forget if you wanted to you can do little effects with your little patterns like that if you want. Okay, so entirely up to you. I'm going to go for the speckle on that, so we'll dry these two off just to activate the texture in the puff paint. A lot of people ask me, can you mix puff paint into acrylic? Yes, you can. You just take a very small amount of your puff and um, use the colour of the acrylic paint to tint it, and then for something like um, the leaf there, if I tinted it with some white acrylic paint, it would look right from the off very snowy um, but it's equally good with um, any other dark colours because there is a sort of a white content you might notice some colours change to a more pastel version um, but if you just want to do a one step effect then mixing with an acrylic paint is a really good plan there we go so that one's all puffed up and this one when you have a thin layer like this, it's much faster to dry. I'm just going to show you a very simple way to add colour to this texture background that we made using white puff paint. So the white puff paint was scraped on with a palette knife and then heated to create a sort of bubbly series of ridges. And one of the fastest ways to create a nice sort of weathered wood type background is to put paint on top and then remove quite a lot of the paint. So I'm working that down into the texture. This one's mocha mousse and then take a baby wipe and just rub it back. Try and remove some of that paint off. Has to be one of the easiest paint effects ever. I love the way that the paint sinks down into the exposed card that was that never got any puff paint on it and yet you can wipe back to the very white areas of the puff paint to create contrast. And that is all there is to it, a very very easy paint effect. If you want to add to this tag and bring some depth, then what you might like to try is going to a slightly different colour and just bringing in a little bit of that colour on there. So let's just put that on in two places. And then again, same baby wipe. Remove most of the paint and instantly you've created a little bit more interest with a second colour. Next step, if you want to darken the edges, this is French Roast. So, so far I've got Mocha Mousse, Brown Shed is the orangey colour, and now I'm just bringing in some of this French Roast around the edges. It's often quite nice on tags to have slightly darker edges. Right, just put a little bit of that around the edge. And then again, knock it back. It's the art of putting it on and taking it off. <laughs> I just tend to do that over and over again with paint. But having a baby white hand is always a good idea. Okay, so we've created a slightly darker edge. Now, to make it really pop, we're going to use some treasure gold. These are colours of treasure gold. It's a wax 
which you can apply directly with a brush onto all sorts of surfaces. It goes amazingly onto our um, crunchy paper. It, because it, that's a wax coated paper it uh, takes this wax really nicely. You can also go directly onto tags, um, cardstock, and in the case of this I'm going to use it to highlight some of the pattern on the tag that we've just made. Now, there's a real array of colours. If you go onto our shop we carry the whole line um, and we get stock in most weeks. It's just something that we seem to be selling a lot of. It's a really really easy to use product. So I'm going to select a few colours. If you're trying to choose what to buy it's quite good to go contrasting so for example those uh, you want something dark, something light and perhaps something in between. So this is on ink site. Um, this one's brass and this one is Florentine, which is a quite an orangey, um, an orangey, yellowy gold, but it's also got a sort of hint of copper running through it. It's very easy to, to work with. So I usually start with the darkest colour, and I'm just picking up a little bit with the brush onto the end of my brush. Some of them are slightly different texture to others, so it's a bit of a surprise until you start to use them. Now this one is is one of my favourites. It's called Onyxite, and it's a very chocolatey sort of colour. It's quite nice to use on the base and I'm just tipping it around the very edge, those sort of darker areas. I don't want loads on here because I, you know, the, the paint effect is, is the key on this tag. I'm not, I don't really want to highlight, um, absolutely take over. This is a, uh, an opaque product so if you apply it really heavily you will totally obliterate everything underneath. I don't really want to do that. So there we go, I've got a little bit of a highlight at the edges. You can see even though it's gone on chocolate, there's quite a sort of an orangey tone to that. And then I'm going to go to a lighter shade. So again, you just pick it up and then start applying it. Now this one is brass and it's much lighter, so it provides a nice contrast. You notice that I just change from one colour to the next with using the same brush. You can do that, it's not difficult. And I'm kind of wanting them to blend anyway. But if you um, are worried about contamination, some of the, the darker colours or in fact purple, kind of you don't necessarily want to mix that with chocolate too much. So then just take a cloth and really scrub your brush onto the cloth before you change colour. This one's quite popular, this one's aquamarine and it's a sort of, a, as it would suggest, a bluey greeny colour. So if you wanted to go in for something completely contrasting, then again tickle the sides and then pull it over. I call it the magpie effect really, you've got that nice little bit of bling on there. And if you apply more than one layer you'll get the colour coming through a lot more obviously. Oh, I think that's enough. I don't want to get too carried away. So there you go, that's just accented that tag ever so slightly with a little bit of a metallic sheen from the Treasure Gold. We do have a sealer product called Treasure Sealer. If it's a, um, a product you're making like a little jewellery box um, onto wood, perhaps you've used it, and it's going to be handled a lot, then definitely you want to buy the Treasure Sealer. It's a varnish that goes over the top but it doesn't detract from the um, metallic nature of the treasure gold. So you can seal it. If it's something that's not going to be handled a lot, then you don't need to. Um, one of the features of this product, and I'll show it to you in a, in a different demonstration, but it um, can be polished to a very high polish. Um, so the way you do that is just using a soft cloth and polish it up. So that's something else you might want to give a go.